is that govern the behavior of round bars under the action of torsional loads are very similar to those of uh, bars that are under the action of axial loads. So I'd like to consider a bar and it's important that the cross section be round for some of the relationships that we will be talking about and it can be subjected to distributed torques so I'll use the double headed arrow to denote a torque so that'll be T and it can be a function of Z so it's lowercase t so we'll measure Z from one end of the bar and perhaps the bar is built in at one end and maybe subjected to an end torque on the other end which is called T naught Okay, so just like in all problems in mechanics, there will be an equilibrium equation. So in this case, that'll be dt dz plus lowercase t is equal to zero. So that's the main equilibrium equation, and capital T is the internal torque that will that one sees on any section cut. So if I take the bar and I make a section cut on it, at some point there's an internal torque t. Uh, Z, and then on the opposing face also there'll be an internal torque there. So. And the magnitude of that will also be T of Z. Okay, so that's the main equilibrium equation. The main e kinematic equation says that the shear strain in the bar is equal to R times D phi DZ. So in this case here, phi is the rotation of a section of the bar as a function of z, and r is measurement of position uh, along the cross section. So if I make the picture of the cross section a little bit bigger here, so that's the cross section of the bar, and r is just simply measured distance from the center of the bar. So that's r there. Okay. Uh, we were deal these will list the equations uh, for linear elastic bars. These these two equations here that we have already uh, are valid for any type of material response. Uh, the actually let's write down the other equation that's valid for any type of material response too. Is that the the net torque on a cross section can be related to the shear stresses that are acting on the cross section. So as an integral over the area of position r times tau the shear stress dA. So that's how we define the resultant on the cross section. And then the special case of elasticity, we have that the shear stress is equal to the shear modulus times the shear strain. So together, these four equations uh, represent the equations that govern the behavior of elastic round bars under the action of torsional loads. Uh, it's also convenient to write these as a single equation, which would be a second order ordinary differential equation in terms of the rotation field phi. And the way we get to that is simply by substituting one relationship into another. So if I substitute here relation one into relation two, I'll find that tau is equal to g r d phi dz. And now if I substitute relation three here into relation four, what I'll find is that T is equal to the integral over the cross-sectional area of G R squared T A D phi D Z. And I get to pull the D phi D Z out from underneath the integral sign because phi is only a function of Z and not in terms of R or theta, the uh, polar coordinates on the cross-section. So, And if G is a constant, then I can write this as G J D phi D Z where j is the polar moment of inertia, namely the integral over the cross section of r squared dA. So I can take now relationship 5 here and I can substitute that into relationship 6 and I recover a single equation d phi dz of gj d phi dz plus the distributed torque t equals zero. So this gives me a second order ODE that I can solve for the rotation. If I have solved for the rotation then I can use relationship 5 to get the torque and I can work my way backwards to find out any other information I'd like to know about the system here. So, And to solve this equation we need boundary conditions. Uh, so the boundary conditions um, typically come in two forms. One is, say, 
you know what the rotation is at some point, let's say phi of zero, that's a given value, or maybe the rotation at the other end of the bar is given to you where L is length of the bar, or perhaps you know what the torque at one end of the bar is, and we would express that in terms of the derivative, and so we're given, that gives us a given value, tells us what the twist rate is, or perhaps we know the torque at the other end. So these are the common boundary conditions that would one would use in, in solving such problems. Of course, one can have more complicated boundary conditions, but th these are the basic ones. So this one here is for built-in bar at one end. This would be for a built-in bar at the other end. So let's say I put a zero here and here. And in this case here, suppose at this end I apply a torque, let's say T1, then I would put T1 here. Or if I had a torque applied at the other end, let's say T2, then I would put T2 here. So these would be the boundary conditions I would use. So when we integrate the equation d by dz of gj d by dz phi plus t equals zero. When we integrate this, we're going to integrate twice. And each time I integrate, I'll get a constant of integration. And I use the boundary conditions here to eliminate the constants of integration.